Hey guys, so today I'm going to be playing a game called Tiny Bunny. Um, it was released just a little over a week ago. It's available on Steam and Itch.io for free. Uh, this game is meant to be one of five episodes. I don't know much about it other than it's a horror game, and I believe it is point and click. So let's begin. Clawed at my window all night long. It wandered the fields and howled like a hungry beast. An endless song weaved from all sorts of voices, shrill, gentle, sneery, twisted in the air. They were shouting and laughing, and arguing about something. Someone was running through the snow while casting long shadows that would occasionally creep close to my bed. Our house had a mind of its own, the creaky old mind of a building they had seen a lot in its days, and was seemingly trying to share its wisdom with its inhabitants. The lonely house faced the forest, and the dark green thicket gazed back with its hollow eyes, rustling whizzing swaying back and forth. One could come out and stand at the edge of the forest to reassure themselves. There was nobody behind the crooked trees. Is that true? Fuzzy silhouettes swaying in the wind couldn't possibly do any harm. Just a play of light and shadow. Just a play. I knew it was my imagination. I was already twelve, after all. Still. Oh, there was like a little fox back there, I think. Hey, put away your book. How many times have I told you not to read at the table? It's bad for your health. Look at how slouched you are. Hey, he should be happy that she's reading at all. People don't read these days, except like text messages and Facebook and Twitter. protest and put the book about Conan the Barbarian aside. Okay. I was stuck in a line I couldn't understand after reading it three times anyway. Olya had already finished her breakfast and was munching on some cookies. She was so enthusiastic, she almost looked like your typical girl from commercials. You're not going anywhere until you finish all of it. It's the mom, as we see right here. I, on the other hand, was still trying to drill a hole in the plate with my eyes, as if it would make the porridge disappear. Really? She's eating porridge? Hazy anxiousness welled up inside, all because of the previous sleepless night, the black forest around our house, and the gloomy wind. The longer I waited, the colder the lumpy white substance became. Gross. It looked like a jellyfish from the Cousteau Odyssey. I love that show. I wonder how horrifying the bottom of the ocean is. Or how cold the black forest is at night. The spoon fell out of my hand. Mom showered me with a cold glare from her green eyes. What did I just say? I'll get it. I had ten seconds to catch my breath before batting the nasty porridge once again. I felt around for the spoon. What is this carved on the other side of the table? Captain? Karina? Ha! Huh, that's my mom's name. I guess she carved it out with something pointy when she was little. She sure was a rascal, damaging the furniture like that. She would scold me for a week if I did something similar, though. Should I remind her about it? No. She's been in a bit of a bad mood lately. I think we can tell. I imagined her being my age, sitting under this table. I wonder, 
Was mom afraid of the dark back then? Or the sounds coming from the attic? Or the thick forest? I imagined my grandma coming into my mom's room. My little mom. Sitting at the edge of her bed, where Olya sleeps nowadays, and saying this in her soft, smooth voice. <sighs> Sorry if I pronounced these wrong. Taiga is a special place, little girl. I know it's probably not Taiga. It's watching you closely, sniffing you out. Trying to discern what kind of beast you are. If you're a good sort, it won't abandon you in times of trouble. But if you're a bad apple, it'll grab you by the side and drag you under the ground. And that would be it. Grandma was caring. She never fought with anybody, never yelled, never swore. These were the times without the maddening screams until late at night, without smashed dishes and mutual accusations. Our parents used to love each other back then. I remember listening in on one of their conversations by chance. They were talking about Grandma getting prepared for her funeral. She had already bought a casket. And she called it her cute funeral box. Mm -hmm. It waited for its time in the closet patiently. It was black, upholstered with meat-colored material on the inside. I saw it when my grandma was getting buried. The house didn't change since the time she was alive. Only all of the photos were gone. Glass-covered pictures with faces of my ancestors. They all had a dead but watchful look in their eyes. I crawled out from under the table. Olya was done with her cookies and was looking at my share like a sly woodland critter. I turned my gaze towards the frosted window. There were a lot of pines outside, but they didn't grab my attention. The pattern of frost formed a picture in the glass. Olya, look! It's a fox! Where? It almost looked like those optical illusion thingies they put on the back of a student's notebook. A mixture of lines at first, but if you blur your vision just a bit, and look under a certain angle. Not outside, on the window. Look, here's the nose, and here's... Hey, eat up. Yes, yes, just a moment. I don't see anything. Hurry up, there's not much left. Why is she in such a rush to make them eat? Maybe they have somewhere to be, somewhere to go? Ah, there it is, but it still doesn't look like one. And I'm telling you, it does. Nuh-uh. It does. Stop it, these kids. I swear. Now I couldn't see the fox either. It disappeared. Went away. Only the frosty patterns, similar to stretched out nettle leaves, keep creeping up the glass. My dad entered the kitchen with long, measured steps. I want to have a beard like his when I grow up. Doesn't always happen. Mom would always ask jokingly, Come on, shave it off, it stings. That was so long ago. Nowadays, rumbling doors and witty comebacks were an everyday occurrence. Olya always covered her ears when she hears something like, What's the point of all this through the wall? It's all for your sake, Dad would reply, for the sake of our family. I always caught every sound in fear of hearing the most dreadful, the deadliest word that started with a D. Uh oh. D I V D. I don't even want to finish it. Divid? It was scary to imagine that me and my little sister could be torn apart and taken into two different families. Oh. Divorce, I think. Anyway, your fox is nothing. I have an owl in my window. You and your owl talk again. You said you believed me just yesterday. Has anybody seen my car keys? I remember leaving them on the windowsill. Right. Maybe you did, maybe not. You're a grown man, a father of two. And still. Karina, please stop. Just let me get ready in peace. Your keys are in the basket near the phone. Well, thank you very much. Anton, stop making a martyr of yourself and finish eating already. And the owl? 
There was no owl. But there was. It had giant glowing eyes. Olya sprung up from the chair and placed her hands on her little face, imitating a pair of eyes with her fingers the size of an apple each. Last year, you had Bebe in your closet, and now this owl? But, but I saw it. Olya shifted her gaze back and forth from dad to mom, but couldn't find any support. Have you thought about befriending it? You know, like feeding it with imaginary mice? A bully our girl. She's just afraid to sleep alone because she's still little. Olya pouted her lips in rebellion and pushed into the hallway. The staircase that led to the second floor creaked. Mom gave Dad a strict look. I can't do a strict look. Oh, that look in her eyes. It's so uncomfortable to be pinned under it. Dad just snorted in reply and left, ringing with the keys he just found. A minute had passed and the theme song from The Little Mermaid echoed throughout the house. It was stored on a, an incredibly worn out cassette tape, which Dad had already had to glue together once. It's so easy to fix objects by gluing them back together. For example. But how do you fix a relationship? Mom moved to the living room and I was left alone, anxiously stealing glances at the window. Olya had trouble sleeping ever since we moved to the house. She would toss and turn or curl up into a ball under her blanket. Sometimes she would jump in the middle of the night and turn on the VCR. Cartoons helped to take her mind off all the troubles we had with the move and our parents. And then Olya said she saw that giant flying monster outside her window. She became obsessed with it. Our parents did everything in their power. They tried every little trick to get rid of these ridiculous fears. Olya refused to sleep alone and didn't believe that the owl was just one of her nightmares. After tonight, I wasn't sure what to make of my sister's words. What to think of it myself. Can nightmares be infectious? Just last night, I couldn't get a wink of sleep and ended up thinking of what to expect in my new school. There were a couple days left before the beginning of the new term. My imagination grew long, twisting hallways that led to a classroom full of kids. But all the students behind their desks were simply dark figures, cut out using a template. Circular holes gaped in the middle of their faces, and pairs of eyes blinked inside those holes. It was as if some completely different creatures were looking at me from behind the flat, black silhouettes. Their cruel glares, filled with icy sneers, made me shiver from head to toe. Will I survive here? Won't they gang up on me and beat me down? Stomp me with their bloodied shoes? The damn school can burn for all I care. I just wish for anything to happen to it. It doesn't really matter what. I didn't want to go there that badly. I didn't want to see people who were just itching to smack me on the head, trip me up, think of a new offensive name for me, worse than the previous one. I felt like the glasses I wore made me an outsider or some sort of monster. Really? That's sad. You know? I mean, you know, just sad in general that someone would be, be picked on for wearing glasses. I personally love my glasses. But kids can be little assholes. My gaze slid across the drawings hanging on the walls. I couldn't consider myself a great artist, but Olya begged me to hang them. Drawing was the only thing that made me happy as of late. The small circle of friends I also had and enjoyed my paintings, and they promised to call me from time to time. Sometimes I imagined Mom picking up the phone and saying in a cold voice, You've got the wrong number. Or, Anton is not around. Anton is not around. I imagined my future classmates lying in their beds just like me, listening to the howls of invisible werewolves outside their windows. Maybe my new classmates will like me after all. But who will ever like a boy with thick glasses? Just remember, they're not thick. They're thick. T-H-I-C-C, -C, okay? I mean, my dad used to wear glasses when he was little, and now he's married to the most beautiful woman on the planet. My mom. The house creaked, pressed by the wind. The condo we used to live in, a nine-floor concrete building, buzzed with the neighbor's frill 
mumbled with the TV set from behind the wall, cried like a baby from the big family next door. I think I just heard something. Our current house, though, I can't really call it new, was completely different. It was silent and easygoing during the day, shadows lay dormant in the corners, on the closet cobwebs, and under the stairs. But they all woke up during the night. Something was watching me from every corner, almost as if the old photos of my deceased family with their ashen eyes were hanging on the walls in place of my drawings. The floor was squeaking, rusty drains were moaning. The attic was occupied by the noisy traps. One could think that the house was performing some sort of demonic melody. And then I realized I was, in fact, hearing music. It was already playing for a good while. Somewhere at the edge of my perception, I could hear a flute. It was mixed in with the sound of the wind, of the creaking old house, and my thoughts too. I stood up and rushed to the window. I wanted to reassure myself that this music was nothing more than a product of my imagination. It's not like someone is playing it there, amidst the cold, snowy night, right? Someone was dancing in the field. Black silhouettes I could barely make out, but the forest as their backdrop. They jumped around, basked in the moonlight, bumped into piles of snow, rolled around and crawled on all fours. Stories about wolves playing under the moon came to mind, but these were clearly not wolves. They stood upright at times, circled around, holding hands and whipping up snow, disappearing into the shadows for a brief moment, but then coming back. Something bizarre was going on. Shadows dancing in the starless abyss made my imagination go wild, making me anxious at the same time. Suddenly, the music stopped. The dancing shadows froze in place, and I could swear, pierced me with their eyes. One of the silhouettes immediately parted from the bizarre shadow carnival and sprinted across the field with giant leaps. Ooh. It glided on squeaky snow without leaving any prints until it was devoured by the pitch black shadow of my house, which became even darker and thicker. My heart was jumping around like a bird inside a cage. I shut the curtains with a swift motion and I stepped back towards the bed. They saw me! A freezing torrent of fear washed over me. I stood in the middle of the perfectly dark room and listened to some unwanted guest move and scrape around looking for an entrance. The sound moved to the right, then circled around the house. Now my guest should be at the front door. I jumped into bed and covered myself with the blankets as if it could protect me. The shackles of fear locked my muscles. I remembered the funeral, my grandma lying there, hands crossed on her chest, her facial features sharp like that of a tin doll. Ants running up and down the legs of chairs that held my grandma's casket. I imagined those little creatures climbing up her head and pulling up her eyelids with their tiny legs. Then their wrinkly eyeballs would once again move inside their sockets and she'd be able to see her grandchildren. Her wrinkly eyeballs, excuse me. I was chanting the spell she taught me throughout the whole procedure. And now, lying under the blanket and listening to the squeaks and howls, I was repeating the same words. On the island of Bayan, underneath the blemished sun, in the sea of the color blue, stands a cabin made of wood. There lay lard and ash and hair for the spawn from devil's lair, to feast and always leave alone, God's faithful servant named Anton. Evil, leave this house must. Ashes to ashes, dust to dust. Bizarre sounds had disappeared. I cautiously peeked out from under the blanket and saw curtains waving around like a hangman. And then the night doused me with a new portion of boiling terror. The sound scratched my eardrums. In reality, something or someone were scratching at the door, hurriedly clawing at wood, demanding to be let in. The door was shut. Dad had become cautious recently, so he installed a sturdy lock. I remember him staring at the black intently as if he was looking for someone. Ashes to ashes! Dust to dust! I hugged my knees, placing my chin between them, and filled the door with my eyes. It was so flimsy and weak before the night of darkness. 
and then the doorknob twitched slightly. Then it turned halfway, once, twice, as if the person you tried to enter had no hands. The doorknob tilted once more, and then started clicking violently. My jaw cramped in fear, my wet fingers clutched the blankets. The door creaked and opened. The wind taunted me, moaning inside the tin brains. Now, now you'll see. The door was wide open. The darkness rift within the cavernous mouth of a doorway. Carnivorous. Tony! It was as if the night was calling out to me, flapping its black wings and squeaking with rusty hinges. I was trembling, ensnared by the web of darkness that hung in the corners of my room, waiting for the one who weaved it to come out of the black gaping hole. Tony! My abdomen tightened and my chest rose up, ready to exhale a desperate scream. But before I was able to do anything, the darkness asked me, Tony? You asleep? Nah. My sister's pale face protruded from the thick shadows. I almost screamed from relief. Oh yeah, I'm not sleeping. Did something happen? Olya frowned and stuck out her lower lip, a clear sign that she was about to cry. It's there again, staring at me. She were away, Tony. Please. I'm so scared. The fear that was tormenting me just a minute ago crawled away and hid somewhere in my stomach. I needed to calm Olya down. It was just a dream, silly. Don't be scared. Dreams don't bite. No one's going to harm you. Olya sobbed. She was trying her best to believe me. But, was I sure myself? I have an idea. Let's go to your room and watch the video Sleeping Beauty, for example. You like that cartoon, don't you? Why does the Sleeping Beauty have a prince and I have the scary bird? The question took me by surprise. Alright, let's watch Cinderella. My thoughts became tangled, fuzzy. What was that? What studied me with its eyes while dancing feverishly under the moon. The darkness was clinging to the window, and it couldn't be fooled by Grandma's old chants. It couldn't be satisfied with the feast of lard and long ashen air. Tony, you coming? Yes, yes. Uh, just a moment. That's why I didn't want to laugh at Olya and her owl in the morning. Who could be visiting us here in the middle of nowhere? We don't know anyone around here. So persistent. I felt extremely unsettled from the silly thought that our morning guests could have come from the woods. I could barely hear voices coming from the front door. My mind is urging me to hide. In the closet. Under the table. Behind the curtains where Olya always hides. Tony, come here. I felt like kettlebells were tied to my feet, but still dragged me in towards the hallway. A couple of policemen towered over me in the doorway. They smelled like frost and worry. They smelled like worry? Okay. My mom always winced and grumbled the moment she saw patrol cars. Worse than bandits. At the moment, though, she looked somewhat confused. Hello? The senior officer, who wore a grim expression, nodded. A boy had gone missing yesterday. His name's Bova. Look at this, please. Have you seen him? He's been held out a photograph for me. Oh, it's Kitty. It's cute. There was a ginger boy around the age of elementary school. Pictured with a wall carpet as a backdrop, 
He had a striped cat in his hands and wore a wide smile. No, I haven't. Are you sure? Look closely. Where would I see him? I don't know anyone around here. I barely leave the house. Well, maybe you've seen him from the window. That's right. Your window looks straight at the forest, don't they? The window. No, I haven't seen anything. I see. He sounded tired, but his eyes, his stare, long and heavy, was full of suspicion. I squirmed unwittingly under the weight of my guilt, which his giant shadow cast over me. The policeman finally tore his eyes away from me and glanced over the hallway, the stairway and the cracks in the ceiling, which I haven't noticed for some time. How do you like your new place, by the way? Getting used to it? Bit by bit. It's just our little daughter misses the city a lot. <laughs> misses the city, huh? Have the locals been treating you well? Yeah, everything's alright. Thank you. The policeman pierced through me one more time with his gray eyes. My head started spinning. Um, can I help you somehow? I asked that in a shaky voice. It looked like a polite boy to end the unpleasant conversation sooner. Now that I think of it, you look just like one of my nephews, little fella. He's a witty boy around your age, wears the same type of goggles. Haha, <laughs> always engrossed in reading those mystery novels. Told me he wants to enroll in police school when his family visited this summer. Wanted to help other people, just like me, see? I felt uncomfortable, as if a distant relative and not a police officer stood before me. You know what? Little boys like you should stay at home, steer away from trouble. The times have changed so much. Mom interjected in a cold voice. You don't say. Ah, well then. What grade are you in, Tony boy? Six. Have you made any friends here so far? Not yet. I'll be going to school for the first time after the break. Ah, and I'll leave you my number just in case. Call me if you have any new info. The policemen were gone along with their shadows, the smell of cheap cologne, and the photo of a smiling boy. His face stood still before my eyes. I wondered what it was like for him, being all alone, there. For some reason I thought of the forest, swaying in the wind. What did his poor parents feel? And what would my parents do if I'd gone missing? Would they cry and thrash around hysterically? Or would they accuse each other like they always do and forget about me, eventually? Mom, Miss Bova, did he go missing in our forest? Seems like it, poor child. I looked out the window at the road. The police, um, UAZ, drove off toward the village. The officer's nephew came to mind when I was splitting off old paint from the windowsill. I remembered all the teenage mystery novels from the Black Kitty series I've read this summer. Your average boys and girls investigated all sorts of mysteries there. They looked for clues, spied on suspicious people, and after a set of amazing adventures, BAM! Solved any complicated case. They became local celebrities and must have made their parents very proud. I noticed a trail of policemen's footprints that led to the forest, and then it clicked in my head. Why don't I start an investigation of my own? Maybe I'll find the lost boy. Maybe I'll get the reward. Olya will be so happy. And not only Olya, mom and dad too. Maybe then they'll forget about their quarrels for a while. Maybe it'll even save us from the D word. I fantasized about buying Olya a Tamagotchi and getting a cassette player and a bunch of tapes for myself and a whole box of Kinder Surprise. When was the last time our parents bought us any toys? Last autumn, I think. My dad had lost his job at the time. There's that annoying song about it. I had little to no idea what was the accountant's job like. They count money, I think. Neighbors used to envy us. But nowadays mom and dad barely had money to afford sweets, and dad would always divide the single chocolate bar between me and Olya. Sometimes I gave her my share, too. No matter how much I wanted to eat sweets, 
She was still just a pipsqueak. I couldn't wait to go out, look for clues. I'm going outside. Yeah, right. You want the police to go around with your photograph next? The forest is so thick. What if the boy got snatched up by wild animals, or something even worse? Even worse, echoed through the hallway. I won't go far. I'll stay away from the forest. Did you hear what I said, or should I repeat myself? Better go pack her school bag or play with Olya. The sound of splashing water came from the kitchen. It meant that the argument was over and that Mom had the last word. Okay, so... We go to the kitchen or the front yard? Let's go to the front yard. Anton! I'll whip you if you make a single step out that door. Can we try again? I need to distract Mom somehow. I'll get scalded and my ass whipped with Dad's leather belt. Ouch. Okay. So let's go to the kitchen. Alright, let's open the fridge. Grandma kept ice cream for me and Olya there, and now I can only see meat bits for soup and clump together. How many? I grew to hate them already. I took a peek at Mom's crossword. She would get very angry when someone gave her advice. So me and Dad faked knowing the answer and being about to reveal it all the time. Cute. I smiled at that pleading thought. Vertical, nine letters. The name of the Philistine deity that protected them from the viper bites and had a nickname, the Lord of Flies. <clears throat> Second letter is E. Hmm. It was difficult to lie to Mom, but there was no other way for me to run away from home. Mom, something's wrong with the TV. The picture is dim and there are stripes all over the screen. Mom's face became visibly distorted. Ah, uh, you're killing me here. So have you had enough of shooting these stupid ducks now? I told you the kind scope will go dim because of your console. Where will we find a TV technician in this hole, huh? Maybe it's just the setting. Please, go see yourself. Strange, it worked fine in the morning. Maybe the snowfall caused it. Mom rubbed her hands clean on her apron and went to Olya's room. And now is when we go out the door. I opened the front door and went into the field. Carefully, so Mom wouldn't see me from the window. When I crossed the distance toward the forest, the snow piles became as high as my knees. I remembered my nightly fears. I saw those silhouettes around here. They were jumping around, holding hands. That hypnotizing music started playing in my head all on its own. In the light of day, those distant figures felt like a simple dream. The sun turned my nightmares to ash, but the aftertaste was still there. Distant ringing in my ears, distorted shadows crawling on the snow alongside me, and a barely audible whisper in my head, blurry and almost kind. Everything was silent. So silent I felt like the world was totally empty. No ground, no sky, no parents, no Olya. The time reached its limit, a one-way trip that ended at the forest piney stockade. Sometimes silence was much scarier than any scream. Strip. Our parents would scream at each other while arguing, and both me and Olya turned to stone, listening to them. But then always came the ringing silence. Our apartment became a numb couple of days before we had departed. I assume that meant hour. It was hard to remember the last time Mom and Dad joked around, laughing or spent time together. Almost like all of it was in a previous life. When they kissed with all your present, she always frowned and snorted in a funny way. But one day it all changed. Something important had left our home, and something scary filled the remaining void. It was as if a fire broke up and our parents were hurryingly packing our belongings, trying to save themselves and us. From who, though? From the people with dead, cold eyes who sometimes visited us in our previous home? The eyes that only saw balls of worms on the black ground and everything. And somewhere far away, a siren was going off, trying to warn us of a coming menace. 
I shuddered, chasing away my delusions, and looked around. There was only me, the white field in the wind that was whipping up dicey dust and belts of powdered snow. I squinted from the sun and turned my eyes to the sunless forest. It looked especially dark in contrast with the blinding white. Knobby tree roots slithered under the snow like fat snakes. Rotten leaves and carnivorous needles froze into the ice. Dry, prickly branches intertwined, ringing up uncomfortable thoughts about fences. Were they protecting the forest? Or were they keeping something from breaking out? Some object was hanging from one of the pointy branches. I tried to get closer, grounding in snow, and when I almost got to the edge of the forest, I saw a knitted mitten. It looked like a wounded bird among the hindering semi-dark. Hungry. Should I take it to the police? Their senior officer looked gloomy, but he still reminded me of Captain Casanova from my favorite TV show called The Streets of Broken Lights. He was also very anxious, with a tired look in his eyes, but still brave and strong. Will this mitten help them find the lost boy? Vova! I heard a distant shout. It looked like it came from the river. Vova! As if the trees were calling out to someone. Vova! resounded closer to me. Someone was standing there, behind the trees, hiding. Vova! I knew someone was looking for the lost boy, but still, something was unsettling about that figure. Its stillness, but it was bent unnaturally toward the ground. Its blackness. There's no one there, just branches and roots. It's all just my imagination. A nearby bird flapped its wings loudly. A shadow split from the tree and disappeared from my sight. I looked away just for a moment, but then I turned my gaze back to the same place. It was gone. So it was my imagination after all. Silence reigned for a painfully long time. My muscles were tightly sprung. My heart was beating somewhere in my throat. Any noise, any little movement, any small whisper from the thicket and I spritz. But nothing of the sort happened. I looked at the mitten once more. I decided to take the lonely mitten from the branch. Oh no. Boba! A shout rumbled across the field and dissolved into the distance. No echo. No hope for a reply. I stepped toward the bristly trees and tried to claim my find. It didn't budge. I pulled harder, the branch cracked and the mitten tore off, landing in my hand with a squishy sound. All too heavy, wet. I squeezed it without thinking and something dark spoke with it, forming a tiny string between the mitten and the snow. Steam rose from the snow pile. I froze in place, studying my palms in disgust. Red. The sound of crackling branches invaded the silence. I didn't have to think twice before running away. Someone was chasing me from the darkness, breaking pine branches, closing the distance with giant leaps. Snow was slowing me down. Crazy thoughts flew through my mind. I'll get caught. Don't get me. I'll get dragged into the thicket. I'll be gone forever. But there was one more voice. Probably one of reason. It gave me strength. Spurred me on. You can do it. Don't stop. I heard an animal roar behind me. It was so loud my ears went numb. It felt like the sound had come from a pack of hungry beasts, rather than a single one. Their nostrils sucked in freezing air. They sensed my fear. Two giant wings flapped above my head. An enormous shadow flew over the clearing. A hoot. A wheeze. These roars were coming from all directions now, from the dried up raspberry bush, from twisted pines, from under the windfall. Hurry, run! Don't look back! It felt like I was inside a nightmare, the snow clearing was vicious like quicksand. I was stuck in place. I pulled my leg from the bushy trap just to be caught in a new one, even deeper than before. 
I continued to drown, sinking deeper and deeper with every desperate push. Was snow ever this sticky? I screamed in horror after realizing this wasn't snow. Something or someone in the snow pile was clutching my pants. I gathered all my strength and pushed forward. The pressure on my leg was gone. My boots slipped out of the hole and my soles were on a hard surface again. I reached a clear path with one jump from there, ran to my house. Its gloomy facade didn't look threatening now. The house was my line of defense from the shadows that flapped her wings and the creatures that were hidden under the snow. I crept over the doorstep and smashed into the door. In all my hurry, I still managed to notice the paw marks, as if a dog striking the wood with its paws demanded to be let in so it could escape the cold. I hadn't noticed these marks when I was leaving. The heartbeat in my ears were much louder than my surroundings. I couldn't hear whether someone was following me or not. What if? They were already in our front yard, and Mom had locked the door. Drowning in fear, I pulled the doorknob, and it opened and gave gave away. I rolled into the hallway and shut the door behind me. Porch planks cranked as my pursuers ascended the stairs. My fingers slipped off the lock, and I couldn't click it into place. I gritted my teeth and pulled hard on the iron doorknob, whipping it between the boards. I stared blankly at the door. Someone was standing on the other side of this pitiful, flimsy barrier that was probably less useful than blankets. Wheezing breath reached into the house and crashed at me in waves. It smelled of pine and sweat. Mom peeked out of the kitchen and chastised me with the same frigid voice she always used when talking to Dad. What exactly didn't you understand when I told you never to slam the door? I didn't mean to. I snuck a glance at the door. The smell was gone and the breath was too. If there was someone there in the first place, of course. Here, a mere five meters away from my mom, my fear was slowly weakening, melting like snow in spring. And with it, the last bit of strength had left my body too. My legs gave way. I propped myself up against the wall so I wouldn't fall over. Mom's expression had changed immediately. The cold mask of strictness and detachment was gone. Mom looked the same as before all those quarrels. She finally saw my condition, my wet pants, plastered with snow. Where have you been? What did I tell you, huh? I told you to stay home. Am I nothing to you? I got afraid she would cry. I reached out to her when I was very little and wanted her to cuddle me. But Mom regained her composure fast and put on her usual face. Her eyes shined like steel, her voice rang out. Your dad can't find his cigarettes. Be honest, did you snatch them? Were you smoking in secret? I... Uh, th there was something chasing me. I... I thought... I stuttered as soon as I started explaining myself. Tears welled up in my eyes. Mom leaned towards me and sniffed my clothes like a beast, searching for the smell of tobacco. She squinted her eyes in suspicion and looked into the front yard. Her expression changed in an instant and she covered her mouth with her hand. Look, over there, at the fence. My heart started thumping as I became prey once again, and my pursuers were following me in the field. I swear that I've heard something scratching at the door, just like in my nightmare. Mom beckoned me with her finger, and I gathered all my remaining bravery to look into the kitchen window, facing my fear. I could barely discern some hairy silhouette swimming in snow through the icy winter patterns on the glass. Dogs! Just a small pack of strays, with no owner and name, barely reminding me of the hungry monsters that I've seen on the edge of the forest. Oh boy, were you scared of them? I think they'd rather be scared of you, Anton. They were chasing me, like a bunny. And what if they were rabid? The smile had slowly disappeared from Mom's face. Now she looked at the dogs as if it were her first time seeing them. What if they attacked Olya? Mom. I wish your dad could just shoot them all. Mom, look, they're alive. Huh? What? Are they your friend or foe, after all? Make up your mind. You're not a little kid anymore. Mom sighed in annoyance, and I felt so bitter that I bit my lower lip and fixed my gaze on the cobweb-ridden corner. Well, some detective I am. In reality, I wasn't risking my life among monsters, but rather my pants among a pack of stupid dogs. 
And for what? What use do I have for this? Mitten. Of course. A dark and sticky mitten that belonged to the lost boy that made a squishy sound in my hand. Seems like I was clutching it the whole time. That's my trump card as a detective. Trump card? Eh. I heard to present this clue to my mom. Ew. Mom, look, this is Boba's mitten. The boy the police were asking about this morning. It's drenched in blood. I found it hanging on a tree. I can show where. Let's call the police right away. Like the officer had told us to. Mom, look. Ew. A shadow of doubt slowly crept into my mom's contorted face. As if she were trying to remember something distant. Like when someone tries to remember their dream, but the images slip away. Stop it this moment. Olya will go insane if she hears you. She already has trouble sleeping and whines all the time. And you joke around like this. At the moment I realized the mitten was actually wet from snow. There was no blood whatsoever. I wanted to sink through the floor from embarrassment. Come here, my boy who cried wolf. Oh, don't just stand there. Come take your pills. A golden colored pill, reminiscent of a dead wasp, fell into my palm. I already took one during breakfast. Don't talk over me. I told you to stay home, and you... Dad would have given you a good whipping for that. Come on, take it, or you won't be able to sleep at night. You have school tomorrow. So I had to swallow the bitter medication. Drinking it down was similarly awful water that gave off the taste of chlorine. Maybe it wasn't Boba's mitten. Maybe it wasn't a mitten at all. Just like the forest monsters. And Oya's owl. Am I going mad? What's happening to me? Either the pill had an immediate effect, or my overexerted brain didn't let the fear inside anymore. Serenity washed over me, bringing yawning indifference along with it. Anton, you done. See, you can do it when you cry. Take off your coat. Are you asleep? No, Mom, I was just thinking. What about, I wonder? It's, it's just something silly. Mom scrutinized me with suspicious eyes. As if she wasn't sure she was looking at her own son and not some doppelganger that came from the forest. Is everything alright? You had the exact same expression when the policeman asked you about the window. I'm alright, Mom. She heaved a deep sigh. Fine. It seemed like the house had changed. The sofa's fabric had become discolored. Fingerprints appeared on the bathroom tiles. The light bulbs also felt different, dimmer, and yellower. Even the saliva inside my mouth had a different taste. A melody from Aladdin could be heard from the upper floor. Olya was done rewatching her favorite Little Mermaid episode and switched to other tapes. I slowly changed into my home clothes, stopped before the sink, and studied my reflection in the mirror, like I was trying to solve one of those spot the difference puzzles. Then I went upstairs. Jafar's and Lego's voices died down. I walked past Olya's bedroom and slipped into my own. One of the drawers was empty. I had the mitten there. Oh, I hid the mitten there, excuse me. The simple action drained the last bit of strength from me. <clears throat> I sat on the bed. And only then I noticed there was something behind the curtains. My tired hand dropped to the sheets. Whether it was due to medication I took or stress I underwent, the room began to contort, as if it was a wind was blowing the walls out like a pair of sails. The room's corners bent. The only stable thing in the room was the figure between the windowsill and the curtains. A flimsy piece of cloth was sticking to my golden visitor. Just like a savant of sorts. Olya? Who else would be standing there? I stood up and licked my dry lips. Yeah, Olya, it's so funny. The silhouette was unmoving. I reached toward the curtains. Badum, badum, beat my heart, controlled by medication. The wind sang in the field with a chorus of voices. For a second, I wanted to return to bed, just lie down and watch the person behind the curtain, knowing fully well that they were looking back at me. They were looking without blinking, waiting for me to fall asleep. 
plastic rings wrestled against the holder when I pulled open the curtains. Gotcha. I knew it was you from the beginning. A blindingly bright halo lit up Oya's head with the setting sun as the background. My sister was shining. When she was just a baby, Dad always used to say she was shining with happiness. I always retorted, but Dad, she's not some flashlight. But I brought her to the window one day and sunlight poured onto her smiling face. I felt like I was holding a child woven from light. I saw everything. Really? What did you hide? She was just like my mom when she was little, before she put on her sad mask of tiredness and switched to her commanding tone of voice. It's nothing, just... Oli ran up to the table, her eyes round, and asked, You stole something and hid it there. Are you a thief? What? Don't be stupid. I didn't steal anything. A clear image came to mind, that mitten hanging from the tree branch. What if I did steal it after all? From the forest, from the tilted figure standing back behind the trees. Olya could be selfish and stubborn when she wanted. Then show me. Swear that you won't tell anyone, then I'll show you. Olya wore a plotting smile. This swore on Mom's heart. An oath she heard in one of the movies about the pioneers we've watched. Don't say things like that. Olya nodded and made a gesture with her hands, locking her mouth with an imaginary key. She was filled with curiosity that was splashing in her giant eyes. I opened the drawer and Olya leaned in, holding her breath. It looked like there was not a simple mitten, but some sort of exotic critter. Is this... someone's mitten? She said that if she couldn't understand what she saw. A certain boy lost it, and got lost himself. Now, you do understand how dangerous it is for kids to wander to the forest, right? He must be really cold out there. Will they find him? They will. The police are going house to house, showing his photo to everybody. Olya traversed the room with care and pressed her tiny palms against the window. And why are they going to houses and not the forest? Are they scared? The question caught me off guard. The police aren't scared of anything. Yeah, right. Flashed in my clouded mind. Did they really check every nick and cranny? Where darkness, cold, and whispers of icy branches dwell? If that's the case, how did they miss the mitten? Or did it appear later, for me? I changed the topic. As if trying to get Olya as far away as possible from the forest thicket. We may get a reward if I go and find this boy myself. A lot of stuff. I can feel the wonders. Sounds cool, right? Olya wasn't listening to me. She was piercing the forest with incredibly adult eyes, uncharacterized for her. What if the owl got him? Nonsense. An owl won't be able to lift a human. But you know what? I was picking my words with utmost care. I forced them out of my overexerted brain. Stay away from the forest. I think it's... I think it's... How should I put this? It's cursed or something. Just like a fairy tale? No, not like that. More like in that spooky tape mom and dad are hiding from us. Well, you shivered and stole a glance at the window. I saw you running. Someone was chasing you. No, it's just, I was hurrying back home so mom wouldn't be worried. As I looked at my sister, my heart was tearing apart. She was so fragile. It was so easy to stifle her light. A gust of wind and her small fire would be gone. You're lucky. Mom won't even let me go outside. I'm like a princess in a tower. I can't go anywhere. I'll die from boredom here. You're wrong. No one's ever died from boredom. And you have me in your cartoons. And mom and dad will be good to each other. You know what I would wish for for my next birthday? I'd wish for mom and dad to turn into children so we could go and play together like we used to. Yeah, and if you'd make them as small as bugs, we could place them in a little box. Olya giggled and tugged at my sleeve. Tony, let's go watch Aladdin. Fatigue went over my desire to be with my little sister. I was washed over by some sort of heinous apathy. I'm too tired. I don't want to. 
Come on. It's so boring alone, and Mom is always busy. We can pick a cartoon you haven't seen before. I know all of our tapes by heart at this point. Not all of them. You haven't watched Peter Pan. Remember how you fell asleep in the middle of it? And so much happens after that. Let's go. Let's go. Maybe a bit later. Should I tell you how it ends? Let's leave that for tomorrow. I won't tell you tomorrow. I know. Let's play hide and seek. No, Olya. Then draw me a dino. Olya, please. Try it. Try it. Would you leave me alone already? I blurted it out without thinking, and then I was immediately taken aback. I never screamed at my little sister like that. Olya stared at me in shock, her lips trembling a precursor to tears. My chest was seething with disgust and embarrassment. What's happened to me? I hurried to prevent Olya from crying. Alright, you win. Let's go watch cartoons for a bit. I don't want to. I came up to her, put my hand on her soft head. Let's go. Let's go watch Peter Pan. Boo, you'll fall asleep again. I smiled and lifted her chin. Her eyes were wet and felt bottomless. I promise I won't. And I'll draw you a full triceratops later. Hooray! Triceratops. Well, close enough. Oya well, rubbed her eyes with a sleeve on her pajamas and a shining smile returned to her face. I'll go ask mom for condensed milk and bread and you rewind the tape. The bread is fresh, just how you like it. Alright, just be careful not to spill the milk. Or you'll be yelled at again. Wanna bet I won't spill it? The tape is somewhere in the nightstand. Look for it. Well, you disappeared in the doorway and I dragged my feet to the neighboring room. The old photon TV was gathering dust in the corner. All that was left was clicking the button on the front panel. The two warmed up and familiar white noise started dancing on the black screen. I almost reached out to turn on the VCR when the noise calmed down and a blurry image appeared for a moment. It was the dark Taiga Forest. Just like the one outside my window. The picture split with screen in half. The screen was split in half. Something creepy resembling human speech was playing. Just a few moments later, the scenery was again overshadowed by noise. Did it catch some rogue signal? Local TV station only really showed Soviet cartoons, and even that was pretty rare. And only just recently, I used to always watch Robotech before school. It was so awesome. Maybe I should tinker with the antenna. What if I catch the channel again? On the other hand, Olya had asked me to find the tape. It wouldn't be nice to disappoint her, but in my sleepy state, I didn't have the strength to do all of it. I sifted through the shelves looking for the tape, I found the tape. I needed thanks to its shabby spine. I got the black crank tingle from its box. The tape inside it rustled while rewinding to the beginning. The rustle was lulling me to sleep. Drowsiness attacked me while I was squatting before the TV. Images whirled in my head, me and Olya flying above the forest, tumbling in the soft clouds. My little sister is laughing, but her smile becomes more and more forced with every passing second. I notice that the clouds underneath us part, bearing the bristly pine tops. Swampy darkness lurked among the, the trees. The wings are no longer able to hold us in all yet. You haven't started without me, have you? My sister brought the tray with unevenly cut bread and a whole can of condensed milk. I rubbed my eyes. No, come sit. Mom and Dad are arguing again. They're going through rough times. Rough times are lame. in the screen, I think they mean on the screen, so. On the screen, Wendy was hiding Peter Pan's shadow into the dresser. Olya was entertained by the cartoonish dog, Nana. Maybe Mom and Dad will buy us a dog, too. Yeah, right. 
I have my own dog in the Neverland. And a cat. And a parrot. Olya smeared a slice of bread with a thick layer of condensed milk and handed it to me. Gross. I hate milk. Have you lost all of your baby teeth? Obviously. Olya frowned deep in thought. Peter Pan has baby teeth. What if they won't let you go to his land with adult teeth? Well, we'll think of something. We'll ask Dad to alter your age in the passport. And why would Dad forge documents? Well, you took a bite of the sandwich and started talking with your mouth full. They did that before. What? You'll grow ears as big as Dumbo's. Well, you got worried and touched your ears. I smiled to myself. My little sister was silent now. She just devoured bread, watching the adventures of Peter Pan, Tinkerbell, and James Hook. As if she got sucked into the fairy tale Neverland. To be honest, I also imagined myself there in a land where no one ever ages, where no one argues over little things, where no one listens to fights and the sounds of broken plates at night. It felt like I was dreaming with my eyes still open. Then my sister's scream pulled me back to reality. Tony, shut the curtains fast. Why? No one's watching you. It's dark, and when it's dark, the owl comes. I'm, I'm scared. I got out of bed, fighting my drowsiness, and closed the curtains. I did my best not to look outside, toward the treetops, toward the taiga forest, which seemingly grew closer and closer. Of course, it was just a visual effect from shadows of branches scraping the snow. Tony, Mom thinks I made the owl up. And Dad, too. Thinks I'm a liar since I'm small. But the owl exists. Honestly. Honestly, it does. You do believe me, right? That it comes every night, and... And... I swiftly grabbed Olya's hand and looked into her eyes. I was trying to transfer at least some of my courage and determination. But did I really have those qualities? Yes, I believe you are right. Just don't nag our parents about it anymore. They're already dealing with a lot, so they'll just get mad at you. Come and tell me if anything happens. And don't look out the window. But it wants me to look. Doesn't matter. Act like it doesn't exist and never existed. Like it's made up, just like mom and dad say. Don't get tired of waiting and fly away. It was madness, but after everything that's happened recently, I was more and more inclined to believe Oya's owl existed. Oh, oops. Um, on the TV, Captain Hook was running away from a crocodile, and Captain Pan was headed to London on a gilded sailboat. By some miracle, I lasted longer than my little sister. Oya's eyelids had dropped. She started snorting lightly, resting her chin on the side of the bed. I stood up and left Oya's room. I was looking out the window, studying the field, when Mom peeked into my room. Enough playing around. It's your first day of school tomorrow. Go to bed. You should sleep properly. You don't want to be teased for being sleepy, right? Adults think everything is so simple, as if sound sleep would ensure my classmates would like me. I covered myself with a blanket up to my neck and listened to the house humming to something invisible rustling in the corners. My inner voice had an opinion for me. Do I want to hear that mysterious flute again? Yes or no? Maybe it's just a part of growing up and I can't fully understand my own desires. The forest wailed behind the barrier that was my walls. Some ethereal entity entered the fields. Branches shook as if they were calling for me. The wind howled on and on in the night. My thoughts were like annoying flies that entered my head before becoming weak and tangled. I didn't notice how I fell into slumber. Thank you for completing episode 1 of Tiny Bunny. Did you enjoy it? If you want to know what happens next, we've already started working hard on the continuation of the story. And then, there's links down here, um, I'm not sure what that is, but Twitter, Steam, all that, BK. Um, okay, that was interesting. I enjoyed it. I liked it. It's really well made. You know what I mean? Like, it's, they put a ton into this. And the story is interesting. I want to know where it's going to go. Um, the one thing I wish that it had maybe was a little bit more interaction 
maybe just a little bit more um, things you can do, maybe investigate. Um, but other than that, it was really great. Um, obviously, this is meant to be more like a story um, unfolding rather than you playing a lot of it. Um, but maybe in the next upcoming episodes, you'll be able to interact a little bit more with your surroundings, which I think would be good. Um, one game, for example, uh, which really lets you do that would be like the Cat Lady, which I watched, um, John Wolf play through that. That was great. And I love John Wolf, by the way. He's, uh, one of my favorite YouTubers. Um, anyway, that said, this was really cool, and I'm looking forward to the next episode. And as soon as it's out, I will play it, and I will make a video. Okay? I hope you enjoyed it. Um, again, like and subscribe if you haven't, and check out my other videos. Okay? Uh, this was Tiny Bunny. Peace.